Uh, my name is Kevin Tracy. I graduated in uh, 2010 with Kevin Carton and Matt Pelton over here. Um, while at Augustana, I played football for a couple years. I majored in political science, um, focusing on public administration, which I don't think is uh, a course of courses that we have here much anymore, but I'm not sure. Um, right after I graduated, I got a job uh, for Modern Woodman of America in Rock Island. At that point in time, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. That was, uh, I think, the second interview I had right out of college, and um, I got that job. Did that for about a year and a half to two years. While I was doing that, I was in the process of applying for other jobs. I had an interview, um, two interviews, one with the car dealership in Moline, working in their service department. The other one was with um, a John Deere contract company called Sedona Technologies. Uh, I interviewed there, didn't get it the first time around, but they, they liked me enough to bring me back the next time I had an opening. Uh, I accepted that position in, let's see, it would have been February 2012, I believe, or 2013, sorry. So I've been doing this for a little over um, a year and a half now. And um, what I do, I work for John Deere Information Systems. John Deere dealerships across North America have a business system that they run their service departments, parts departments, sales, and accounting um, off of. I work with that business system. I travel around, work with the dealership personnel, and install that business system for them. Um, it's a lot of data work, a lot of business process work, and um, so far I'm really enjoying it. I just got a, a new role on a new team. I'm project manager, team lead now for those projects that, uh, that we take part in, and uh, so far it's been great. A lot of preparation, a lot of, uh, a lot of process, a lot of documentation, a lot of note taking, um, things I'm sure you guys are familiar with, but so far it's been, it's been great. Happy to be here. So my name is uh, Mark Hayes. I am a 2008 graduate of Augustana, majoring in uh, business administration while I was here. Uh, currently I am the um, owner of Top Notch Production, it's a Moline based produ production company. Um, we do a lot of stuff on campus. You may have seen me around campus um, or improve around campus as well. Um, my so stemming back from business administration and such, my drive all throughout life and stuff was entrepreneurship and kind of leadership. Um, I was very involved with um, at that point in time it was Office of Student Activities. Now it's the Office of Student Life. Same thing, just different name. Um, very involved in campus activities here um, and leading committees to bring events on campus um, and also did um, started the technical side of that department as well uh, where you do some of the technical stuff, um, sound systems, lighting systems and such for on campus events now. Um, that didn't exist before I came here um, and I was kind of handed that opportunity. Um, from there that kind of stemmed my drive into entrepreneurship as well. Um, so beyond that, I started in 2007, I started Top Notch Productions um, and we're based out of Moline and we are a company, a live event production company that does all the big sound systems, lighting systems, video systems, uh, staging, uh, rigging, trussing, all that kind of stuff um, for tours and concerts and festivals that you guys go to. Um, so we own all that gear and we lease it out and take it out on the road. We're the engineers and engineer it um, and put everything together. So it's a, there's kind of two parts to it. Obviously, yes, I'm a business owner, so there's definitely a management side of running the business and knowing all the ins and outs of, you know, payroll and taxes and how to correctly manage and manage finances and all that kind of stuff. Um, on the flip side of that, I'm also just as equally involved in all the um, entertainment side of it. So learning how to be an audio engineer, learning how to calculate uh, you know, loads on, on roofs and stuff when we're hanging all those lights and stuff that you see at a, uh, at a concert. Uh, that's a very involved engineering process on that side of it to figure out all that um, to make sure that we don't collapse the roof of some arena that you're in. Okay? Um, so that's a totally different side and that's the kind of side that almost more interests me. Um, and has driven the company to be what it is today. Um, so it's uh, like I said, it's, it's kind of twofold. Um, I, I got the start actually um, when I was doing the stuff here. I started getting calls um, from other folks outside of campus saying, "Hey, I, I hear what you're doing over there. Would you come and do sound for whatever event?" I'm like, "Well, I don't 
don't really have a business, I don't really have any gear. So and that kept happening a few times, so I kind of thought, okay, wait a second, let's take a look at an opportunity here. And that's how I wound up in the position I'm at now. So I um, started the company and we've been uh, growing ever since and do a lot of the festivals uh, that happen here in town, a lot of the stuff on campus here, um, been out on, on tours and everything like that as well. Um, so chances are you probably, you may not actually know that it's us behind the scenes because we like to be behind the scenes. You should know we're there. If you know we're there, we probably screwed up. Um, so we like to kind of be behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And I can attest to his uh, organization's quality. They just did our uh, Unity Point Health Trinity style show for our volunteers. So yes, I didn't know he was there. So. <laughs> Um, I'm Erin Platt. Uh, I'm a 1992 graduate. Yes, that is the same year a lot of you were probably born. Um, I graduated with a, a major in English. Didn't know what I wanted to be when I wanted or when I came to Augustana. Um, I had no idea what I could do with an English major. In fact, I remember um, sitting uh, at my summer job and my manager asked me. Uh, what my major was, and I said English, and he said, oh great, you're not going to get a job. So I said, great, okay. Um, so I'm really glad that you guys have this whole core, uh, core organization to help you with your career development. Um, I love to write, I love to read, so that's why I became an English major. Um, and at first I thought I wanted to be a sports journalist. I worked in the Augustana Athletic Department in the football press box for 23 seasons, um, taking statistics. I was a sports editor for The Observer. And at that time, those experiences actually played into what I do today, the journalistic side of it. Um, I, I graduated, no clue. Um, everyone kept saying, oh, you're an English major, so you're going to, um, you're going to teach English. Mm, no, I, I like teaching, but no, I don't want to teach English. Oh, so you're going you're gonna to write the great American novel. No. And so it kind of became a question of, what do I want to do? So I actually uh, took an internship after I graduated. At that time, uh, I was able to do that. So I didn't do an internship while I was a student. Wish I had. So that's some of my advice here today is if you have an opportunity, take it. Um, I did an internship at what was then United Medical Center in their marketing and communications department. United Medical Center, while I was there, merged with Franciscan Medical Center. Uh, or Franciscan Hospital to become Trinity Regional Health System, um, which last year rebranded to be Unity Point Health Trinity, which is where I work today. I did not go straight from there into where I am today. Um, after my internship was over, I left and I worked in marketing and communications for a variety of other organizations. And in 2002, my internship supervisor, who was their media relations specialist at the time, called me up because she was planning to leave to take another job and said I recommended you. We stayed in contact over all those years and I wound up interviewing and got the job and have been there ever since. So I never took a marketing class when I was at Augustana and that's actually one of my regrets is not to have any um, business and marketing experience prior to going into that field but I had communications and I had um, good critical thinking skills and strategic thinking skills, so don't underestimate the power of that. And um, also, when I was a student, we didn't have things called the web <laughs> or email, um, which now you're like, so 2005. But um, there was no Facebook, there was no social media, no Twitter, no Reddit, no anything, none of that existed. Um, so, but in the field of communications, you still have to know, first of all, you have to be able to craft a message, but second of all, you have to have at least a working knowledge of what some of the platforms are that the message is gonna get out. So you are constantly learning. So, um, in fact, in my bio, one of my most proudest achievements at the bottom, uh, my husband Jason and I just recently lobbied Oscar Mayer successfully using a grassroots social media campaign, and the Wiener Mobile did indeed come and take us from our church to our reception site in December. So, that will come into play later. I have a special prize for the best question. <laughs>
My name is Matt Felton. I graduated in 2010. Um, so, <coughs> Kevin and Kevin and Alex, who also organized this, was on my basketball team when I was on campus. Um, I majored in accounting and business, but I came to Augustana as a pre-med major on my application. So the value of the liberal arts uh, education and, and the institution allowed me to identify new interests and participate in a lot of different activities, either through athletics or um, you know, interfaith understanding committee, honor council, a variety of different ways to get involved and build you know, experiences and skills that you might not be able to do on um, or as effectively in leadership roles on larger campuses. When I graduated from Augustana, I went on to work at the Governmental Accounting Standards Board in Norwalk, Connecticut. Um, this is an organization that writes the rules that governments have to follow when they're doing their accounting and, and finances. Um, it's the partner of the Financial Board, which does that for all the companies across the U.S. So this was a very um, selective and uh, kind of a, a platform that jump-started my career. And, um, it was you know, very much an honor to, to have that opportunity, but also it was my only opportunity coming out of Augustana in 2010. I looked into jobs and teaching. I was very passionate about leadership education at that time, so I was looking at organizations like Teach for America. Um, John Deere I did an internship with when I was in school, so I was hopefully maybe going to stay with Deere and Company. Um, but nothing worked out at that time, so while it was a great opportunity, it was also the only job I could pursue. And um, I had other passions and interests, but I jumped right into that, that opportunity, obviously with student loans and uh, the need for money right out of school, it seemed silly not to take the job. Uh, after that experience, I went on to work at KPMG, a uh, private accounting firm. I was based in San Francisco, California, um, and working in a transactions consulting group that provided advice to businesses um, when they were trying to make decisions about their internal policies and external transactions they've entered into. So it was very much a, a rigorous business accounting um, experience and opportunity and uh, not always what I had expected when I first came to Augustana. Um, to give you some clarity, from that experience I, I ended up voluntarily leaving the firm on um, very good terms but to pursue other interests of mine. So I, I, I was very passionate about economic development, especially in the international space on the African continent. And so I left that role after building a variety of relationships or leads uh, sort of on the side and keeping those interests alive while I worked in accounting, um, hoping that it would lead to something uh, working in international development in Africa. And I ended up uh, not having a job for about five months and the job I had hoped I would get um, wasn't uh, there for me as I'd expected. Um, but after a period of time being proactive about reaching out to, to different organizations and, and, uh, and people, you know, I found the opportunity that led me to my, my current role that I'm about to transition out of, uh, working at an organization called the African Leadership Network. It's based in Nairobi, Kenya, and it connects business leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, government ministers um, from across the continent, a variety of industries, um, and all regions of the continent, so from over 45 countries. And my role there was uh, the director of this program called the Africa Awards for Entrepreneurship. So this awards program looks for the top businesses, most innovative, most impactful, around the continent. Uh, a variety of sizes, from small local businesses to large African corporations. And then we honor them through our network and connect them to our members to help them grow their impact in business. So I was very passionate about this, and I got involved with entrepreneurship kind of on the side, just teaching in Africa, but passionate about this opportunity because it was a way to see how business can drive social change, really on a much smaller level than, and a much more impactful level than you might see working in a company um, in the US. That's not to say you can't see it, but for me, from my experiences, I was very passionate about Africa and um, this space. So that's the role that I've been in over since last fall. Um, and I'll be starting graduate school this next month, actually, in um, Madrid, focused on Madrid, Spain, focused on international relations. And I'll just add, you know, the the liberal arts education space was extremely valuable um, for me in each of those steps along the way. You know, just take the technical side of what you're learning in your majors out, and the critical thinking, the creative thinking, 
the research skills, the writing skills, the ability to speak to groups of people, those were the things that helped me uh, earn people's trust and respect as I moved to each of my um, different organizations. So. Um, my name is Javier Perez, and uh, first of all, thank you for taking my LinkedIn picture. <laughs> it's like six years ago, man. <laughs> Look at the <different> dog. <laughs> Hello, I'm here. I know, that's fine. Um, I'll tell you, I, I applied to three colleges when I was in when I was in uh, high school. I applied to the University of Illinois, University of Iowa, and this little school called Augustana College. And uh, all I knew is that when I said Augustana, someone would say, oh yeah, my cousin's wife, blah, 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 went to Augustana. Uh, I'm the first guy to go to college my whole family, so I didn't even know what college was. So when I, when I, when I got to Augie, um, I was asked by an advisor what I wanted to do, and I said, well, I want to be an engineer. And my first year was <coughs> in a little calculus, in a little physics, all that kind of stuff, you know, and, uh, and then I met engineers, and figured they didn't want to be an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so uh, I went around campus looking for another major, and I saw uh, this speech path major, you know, that had no clue what, what the heck that was. But it seemed kind of like, you know, I can understand, so I, so I, uh, I changed my major over to speech pathology or, or communication disorders. Um, I actually went to uh, Rust St. Luke's Medical Center for about a year. And, and, and I think that liberal arts can still follow me too because you know, I found out that I didn't want to work with old people or little kids. <laughs> and uh, so that, that led me to what, what ended up being a 15-year career in Chicago as a full commission sales guy. Um, I mean, liberal arts, it's, it's, I didn't know at the time, but it kind of makes you, um, especially as a sales guy, I would say, it makes you kind of whole. You know, you, 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 you're, you're learning things that you don't know you're learning at the time. Um, you know, uh, a lot of my friends are English majors, you know, and they're, they're probably some of the brightest people that I know. Because <laughs> they have these great, you know, advertising jobs and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I don't know, I, I really enjoyed it. And I think, uh, I, think uh, I probably came to August because I was scared of the bigger schools. You know, the you know, the 300 classroom kind of places, and all that stuff, and I, and I didn't want to mess up. But uh, it, was, it was a treat, a treat. Um, that's really all I can say about it. You guys have any questions right now? I have a question for Matt. It says on your bio that you were able to work, study, or travel in over 35 countries. Can you elaborate on that? That is an unaudited number. But um, <laughs> there's some validity to it. Yeah, so I've, um, when I left KPMG, I took what you might call a sabbatical, but it was a very proactive sabbatical to make sure that the relationships and opportunities I pursued, um, you know, would be there for me and that I still had relevant experience to them. So um, through school, I studied in West Africa and got in Senegal my last term at Augustana. Uh, I went to China and Japan with the basketball team here at Augustana. Um, and growing up, I was uh, lucky that some of my family came from Europe, from my grandmother's age and a bit higher, so I was able to visit those countries. But working with the African Leadership Network and KPMG, I was exposed to some projects and events and travel opportunities both in Europe and Africa um, that have allowed me to, to visit quite a few countries abroad. How did you decide to leave the to pursue what you wanted to do? Um, obviously, that's you know, a lifelong career that a lot of people would, would never leave. So, you know, do you have any time to decide to go back and convince yourself to that you It took a lot of convincing, not just of myself, but parents, as you can imagine, and, and people, friends, and mentors that you want to sort of verify that it's the right decision. Um, I'll be talking about this um, at 12.30 in a session about making values-based decisions, but for me, I, I kind of came to the point where I knew uh, that within KPMG, I would, I would reach a certain plateau because I wasn't fully invested. I was still doing well there, but I knew that I had these other interests and the skills that I got there, the relationships were still so relevant. Um, and I put myself in a financial position where I could give it a try and if all else failed, K 
KPMG would hopefully welcome you back. So, um, it was kind of a protected situation, but it does seem very high risk when you just look at it um, you know, objectively from a third party. So. Do you feel like you're on a therapist couch? <laughs> we can do that later. Okay. <laughs> I have a question for Javier. So, what is the most rewarding aspect of your job? My job? Yes. Uh, making money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, well, I relocated here two years ago. My wife became one of the co-champions here at Augustine, I started with the area. After 15 years in Chicago, um, yeah, in sales is, uh, you kind of out there on your own, but you, you uh, Figure out a way on how to you know, close a deal, bring it from the beginning to the end. <coughs> Were you working with Roll in Chicago? I was not. I was not. I was a trading spouse, so I uh, I left the uh, banking world in Chicago after 15 years, and uh, that was just kind of a, you know falling onto that. I think there was um, a guy who was running for mayor. Somehow he got here in Rock Island. He wanted to meet up with me, so we went out for coffee and. The day afterwards, I had a job with the police firm. So, so how did he hear about you? Uh, mostly, you know, I, I do a lot of volunteering. You know, um, uh, when when you go from full commission sales uh, to being a trading spouse in a smaller city, you know, so I call this like my second tour of Rock Island. Um, <laughs> You, you, you find that, that, that there's not enough stuff to keep you busy. So, you know, I, I, I became uh, involved with my neighborhood, with the city, with uh, different organizations, and uh, somehow he saw, I guess he thought that I would, you know, that I would be able to help him, you know, with his campaign. Uh, he didn't win, <laughs> so. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> So, uh, risk management, risk analysis, um, every single day. Every single day, you're you're identifying risk. Um, you are looking at uh, mitigation plans for them. You are identifying: is this risk going to stop our project? Is this risk something we can manage while moving forward? Um, we assign those risks, manage, you know, the, the management of those risks to individuals on the team. But um, that was, that's a good question. That's the, the class that has stuck with me the most, um, is identifying those risks, what we're gonna do to manage this risk, um, what is the next step to keep us moving forward in our project. I wanna piggyback on that just a little bit. That's actually something that's also used in the world of public relations and media relations because when you're crafting a message, and again, I didn't take my business classes, but the critical thinking, you have to have skills like that to be able to assess, okay, if this is the message we're going with, you know, what what are the ramifications if we go with this, you know, and you're constantly going, okay, if this, then this, and then you tweak things based off of evaluating, okay, we go this direction, it's going to mean this, it's going to expose us to this much liability. If we say this, you know, we go this direction. Question this is a question for Aaron. Um, you said that you're an English major, but after college you went into marketing communications at Trinity, basically. I was just wondering how you found that internship, what drove you to apply for it? Um, because, you know, when I saw it as well, I was just like, that's kind of scary, you know, because I'm an English major. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering how you got right there. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, Kavita is one of our interns <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, I found out about the internship actually from a friend, who, an Augustana, a fellow Augustana student who was completing the internship uh, at the hospital at the time, and they were at the end of the internship, and they were looking to fill the internship, and were looking for candidates. And so I was like, well, and it was more of a, at the time, it was more of a communications internship, and like I said, it was, I mean, it wasn't a marketing and communications, but it was in the marketing and communications department. Um, so I, and it was kind of a jack of all trades um, internship as well, and so I applied and 
you know, got to work on a variety of projects. In fact, I knew, you know, I was really scared because I'm like, well, gosh, I wasn't a marketing major, I, you know. Um, on day one, they, they had me do a flyer, did you know, a flyer in Publisher for, uh, or no, anyway, for the Iowa versus Illinois football tailgating employee <coughs> party. And I was like, oh my God, I love this. I mean, and I was like, I found my calling, you know, and it's just, you have to try new experiences. Um, and just, I kind of, a lot of on the job soaked up, you know, knowledge on the job just by being exposed to new experiences and new projects and trailing people and kind of watching them and learning. Okay, sorry, this is kind of for all of you. So um, what is your like biggest regret when you were in college, like what you did do? So can we just kind of... So, I guess how? I'll focus on that. Most of you guys are, are mostly seniors here, I imagine. Yes. Mostly maybe juniors. Getting yeah, toward, we have first years here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> So you got, you got a little time. First of all, start, start planning, you know, start preparing for interviews. Start getting, you know, I guess interviews lined up. Things you have a passion for, things you're interested in. Start planning for that now. Don't wait till the third, tri or the third trimester of senior year um, to start thinking about that stuff. If, you know, if a, a professor or teacher mentions something in class, if there's an opportunity outside of Augustana, take advantage of that. Um, don't sit back and just wait. And you're gonna enjoy college, you're gonna have a great time and everything, but when those opportunities present themselves, take advantage of them. Start planning, start preparing, and um, just have a kind, kind of plant that seed in the back of your mind that I wanna take advantage of this because four years is gonna go by fast. It goes real fast. And before you know it, you're gonna, your parents, you know, whoever may be asking, well, what are you gonna do when you graduate? What's the next step? Start having that, you know, kind of prepare. Start having that planned out. That's something I kind of wish I would have taken uh, more advantage of and sometimes would have worked a little bit harder on. I'll kind of step off that too. I mean, there's so many, I would provides you with so many different opportunities. Being a liberal arts education, a liberal, liberal arts school, there's so many different possibilities for what you can do. Don't be so, you know, you know, focused on, well, that, that's the one area I want to focus in. You may be surprised that there's, you know, something out there you never would have thought that you would have an interest in. And if that opportunity presents itself, even if it's totally outside the box of what you think that you want to do, take it anyway, okay? The worst that could happen is that you don't like it and be like, okay, well, at least I did that and I know that that sucks, so I'm not going to do that, okay? So, you, you can kind of hone in on what you want to do by taking those opportunities no matter how outside the box it is. But later on in life, once you graduate and that type of stuff, when you have financial commitments and all that kind of stuff, those opportunities are very, very hard to come by at that point. Because um, now you've got bills to pay, you know, you have family, whatever the case may be, those opportunities are gonna be really hard to get and they're gonna be a hardship. Take them now while you have the opportunity and that will help you focus in on what you're really gonna enjoy after graduation. Um, I would say, and I've kind of touched on this already, one of my personal regrets was not, um, but it's kind of 2020 hindsight, going into the field that I went into, I wish I had taken some marketing or business classes, but it wasn't a deal breaker. But again, as Mark and Kevin said, get involved in things that are maybe outside of your comfort zone or in different areas that um, you, you weren't sure if you were interested in that or not. Um, I came in, you know, like I said, loving, you know, to write, but I joined the newspaper because I thought, oh, well, you know, that's a, that's a student activity. That'll be kind of fun. And then I wound up, um, and this is how you build relationships, I wound up working on the student newspaper. I was a sports reporter starting with, that was the beat I got assigned, and I, I'm not an athlete. Oh, it's ugly, don't, no. Um, but, I was assigned to go meet the sports information director, Dave Rath, and I was told that he was horrible and really mean. So I went in there shaking in my boots. I know, right? And you're going, what? He is the nicest guy, most generous. Um, and I wound up going in there, and then when it came time for me to graduate, I wanted this internship, 
but I didn't have any, um, I know it was PageMaker, uh, I didn't have any um, graphic design skills, I didn't know programs. Dave used PageMaker in doing the sports programs, the athletic programs um, for each season, and he offered to give me a tutorial so that I would have the skills I needed to successfully get the internship. And that's just a, and that's just, you know, keep building relationships. You never know where they're going to lead. Um, so I think my biggest regret is um, not interacting with people across different departments and fields of study while on campus in my earlier years because I think there's so much knowledge and new perspective and um, so much you can learn from people that it's equally as inspiring as it is impressive and it will it'll also give you new ideas about where you want to be and where you want to go. I'll give you an, give you an example. Starting you know, from your sophomore year, you really start to focus on your majors, right? And so the majority of your time is spent with the people that are in your classrooms, maybe your friends from a sports team or a, a group, but the campus shrinks a lot once you get into your later years. And uh, really when I went to West Africa with Kevin, actually, you know, the student body and the diversity of that experience really transcended all the different disciplines and fields on campus and uh, you learn so much about yourself uh, when you're challenging each other in conversations and, and maybe learning about new perspectives, new places, new cultures, and new ideas. So I think that was something I wish I would have done earlier on. Um, you know, I pushed myself in the sense of trying to get all, like, all of my money's worth from a majors, minors perspective, from a being involved in different groups. Uh, on campus, but I think um, you know the, the greatest value to the school is the people around you that you're growing up with on campus. So um, try to be proactive and learn from each other, and not get siloed into you know whatever institution or major you might be involved. In. All right, I don't have any regrets. No, no, oh jeez, no. Um, I, I I agree with you. You know, uh, uh, the networking thing is the, probably the biggest thing. If you don't see it in the students, um, uh, I've been in 35 weddings as a groomsman, and most of those, say 95% of those are Augustana people that I met. Um, but actually networking with people that you knew in college, and people that you were acquaintance with were, were pretty huge. Uh, you know, it's it's, that, that's the thing, you know, you, you, if, if, uh, if you'd be attending Princeton, your parents would probably you know, know each other and you'd have these old business connections and all that kind of stuff. So I think that the most powerful thing you can do is actually stay connected with, with other people that are here at Augustana, um, regardless, you know, with, with whatever we're, we're doing, you know, uh, it's always better to have contacts and it's always better to to know someone from Augustana and, and, and whatever you're, whatever other whatever you to meet up with, I'm saying. Um, and, 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 I, and I think I guess that, that there's a regret. You know, I after after uh, Augie moved to Chicago, um, and it was weird because you know, you, you you see like um, all of a sudden you walk into like let's say a bar or a restaurant, and then the same group of people that were that were sitting at a lunch table at Augustana, you, you run into in a city of three million people. You were in there, all of a sudden there's like you know like a table of uh, Delta Kai's and it's kind of so weird, you know. But um, but it, um, but I, I didn't really actually start reaching out to people until probably about five or six years after college. Um, that that, uh, that I, I would say yeah, alumni, the alumni and and the uh, and the uh, student body you really want to be connected to in any which way, whatever your discipline is. For everybody again, um, like how do you network? This I'm freshman, I have no idea. Is it just making friends? You want me to start or you want to I'm sorry. Um, how do I network? <clears throat> um you're freshman now, I'm trying to think of how well first of all, you know, the <coughs> social media with you guys, you're you're in a completely different different generation than I was in. Okay, so that's how I'd say that first. Um, you know, LinkedIn came out years after I left college. Um, I think we had, like I said, 
toward the west. I think we had Pegasus Mail, where you can email someone at the, at the college, and that's about it. Um, yeah, the social media thing is great, but I think uh, I think social media, to me at least, uh, as as a soon to be forty year old, I think it's actually a little antisocial as well. So I try to actually have what I call people call them face to face. I don't know why you call them belly to belly in Chicago. We, we I try to have at least kind of like you know uh, like like four to six you know like belly to belly interacts with someone um, th throughout the week. Uh, but but that's it. we're talking post probably college for you. Um, you just want to keep in front of people, and, and you want to let them know what you, what, you know, you want to let people know what you want to do, what your goal is, and and with that you you can grow your network. Uh, I mean, I spent 15 years in Chicago, so I, I have an incredible network in Chicago, I, I believe, um, and it goes through from <coughs> to. Uh, Go on a police chaplain to uh, CFOs and CEOs of different companies. Um, so I, I would say the social media is okay, but you also don't forget about the face-to-face the -face meetings with people. And, uh, and I know this is going to sound really old school. Thank you letters for me were great. Nobody ever gets mail anymore, and I figure like my 25 cents, you know, a, a, a week kind of thing. If that helps out the postal office, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pay for it. Go ahead. Um, just to add on to that, I think um, when you people think about networking, they think about companies they want to work for and you know, the, the interviewers as being scary, and the CEOs as being these intimidating people, or the doctors as being intimidating. And really, a lot of those people, whether they're Augustana graduates or not, would be more than willing talk to you if you contact them and express your interest. And I think we forget that because um, you know they're in a different space professionally than you, but really at one point in time they were sitting in your seat as well. So I think one of the things that worked for me over time was starting to, to come to that realization and have the confidence to send an email to uh, a stranger or someone that I'd met through a, a friend or a, a common acquaintance. and. You know, express that interest that you're talking about, get in front of them, but um, just taking that one small step can really open a lot of doors or just opportunities for conversation to learn more and help you figure out if it's really what you want or if it's a different path. So that would be my advice on, um, I'm sorry, I have to step out, but um, thank you for having me. It's been great. Networking, one of the most important things, in addition to establishing, you know, the connections, don't always want something whenever you're connecting with the people. Um, because otherwise, that then will signal to them, oh, the only time I ever hear from Susie is when she needs something. You know what? Sometimes just call them up and have coffee just because. Because then when you do need something, they know that it doesn't necessarily always come with strings attached. Um, that's the worst feeling in the world. I mean, I have people who do it to me that, you know, sometimes we just get together to talk and we wind up making connections and then there are times that we get together and, you know, you're like, okay, let's have lunch and you have something that you need from them, you talk about it for five minutes, you get the deal done, and then you continue having fun on your lunch and talking about other things. But, um, so don't always need something. Kind of stemming off that, I think maintaining is the hardest thing to do. Maintaining the people that you network with and, and have as your contact. Um, I think that's the hardest thing, but also the most important thing. Some folks, as you go on in your career, you're going to meet more and more people. And the folks that you met, you know, first off, you may they may kind of drop off your radar a little bit. Um, to me, that's probably one of the worst things that can happen because oftentimes that they're in a different position now too and a totally different aspect that you may not realize unless you stay connected with them which then opens up an entirely new door if you moved on and they moved on and you're both you know get back together there's a potential for a completely new opportunity there that never existed before so i think going back and maintaining everything is also a huge huge key of it Volunteer while you're here. Um, volunteering gets you, it introduces you to new people, um, brings you to new experiences. Um, volunteer in your whatever departments you may be in. I, I worked in the athletic department when I was here, so I know they, they ran very well. Um, but it, 
It just it's, it is. It's it's meeting people. If there's a group project in one of your classes, don't go to your two best friends and be in their group. Spread out a little bit. Go to somebody who you who you don't know. Somebody you haven't met. Work with them. Um, take the lead in that project. Just start. You know, I guess taking more responsibility and just putting yourself out there. I think that would be the best advice I can give. I just thought of one more thing, sorry. Also, in addition to not always wanting something, be willing to reciprocate. Uh, Aaron, you mentioned um, regretting not taking like a marketing course. Um, anyone can ask this question, but what class or what type of course would you recommend to anyone of any major that has really helped you? Depends, I guess. Um, like I said earlier, the risk analysis, risk management, that's something I guess in certain fields you're not really focused on, but uh, you know, in the business world, um, corporations and companies, every day, every conversation is managing risk and identifying issues and pinpointing problems and how you're going to move forward, what the next step is. So if there's any sort of risk analysis um, classes, I would highly recommend that. I would go off. I think, and I don't remember exactly what it was called, but it was something that was a around like business writing or something like that. Um, no matter what field you go into, at some point in time, you're probably gonna have to write something. Okay? Whether it's an email or a letter to a potential client or a thank you letter, whatever the case may be. Um, so that stems across all industries and careers and stuff like that. Um, I think for me, that would probably be the biggest one is that, I mean, there is a, a style and a way to do it and stuff and that that class I know helped me in approaching people too, not only in a writing sense, but in a speaking sense too, of how to approach things without you know, coming off the wrong way or something like that. So I think that was most vital for me, for sure. It's interesting, I um, volunteer with Junior Achievement and one of the things we talk about are the STEM skills, science, technology, engineering, math, I'm sure you guys have all heard that. There's a big emphasis on all of that, but one thing that we always talk about also is communications and the ability to be able to communicate your idea, to be able to have good interpersonal relationships. Um, so, I don't know, Communications 101 or a business writing course, definitely. And bowling, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, uh, what, another regret, I got a couple regrets I have. Uh, I wish I would have taken a course with David Crow <coughs> in the English department. So, when I, when I think of like, you know, like professors, especially in the heart of like liberal arts, like uh, there's, there's there's neat different props out there that I wish I would have like taken a course from them. You know, I was able to do it with with, with the other you know people, but uh, yeah, just to be able to spend you know three hours a week with a professor and seeing how they think and learning from them and uh, growing up you know with them. So that's what I would say. Don't tell David Pro that. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question. Um, it relates to everyone, um, but um, majority of you guys all have a major that you went to school for, but are doing something useful to it, but kind of different from what you kind of intended your path was going to be. Um, and as a senior biochem pre-med pre -med major, um, you know, any of the pre-health tracks or pre-professional tracks, we kind of have a set track. Um, and it's kind of, you, you know, all your internships and things like that fall in line with what your path is going to continue on with graduate school and wherever you're going to continue on to. Um, how do you not, um, look past the other opportunities that might branch outside of that track when you're looking to something so specific as medical school or dental school or vet school or anything like that. Um, how do you not push those opportunities that might be in medical sales or in, you know there's other opportunities in those fields that how do you not bypass those on the on I have under track? Specific answer for this one. Actually, uh, over Fourth of July weekend, I we went back. My wife and I went back to Chicago and. Uh, had a weekend there, and um, we had dinner um, with one of my friends from Augustana, and, and he he actually he he the look on his face, you know, uh, was so grand because he had just spent this last day of being a student. It was the day before he met us, so he's finally a cardiologist, you know, with a couple of fellowships or whatever at Northwestern. And you know, what, what I was talking about this, you know, like, like you know, geez, you know, like you know, that was a long time, you know, to, to be in school. So, for him, and I'm guessing you're asking because you're you, you're looking towards medical school. 
That's the, that's the, that's plan A. You know, we have plan A, B, C, you know, whatever. What, what, and then his name's his name's Dan Schimmel. He's a cardiologist in Northwestern. <coughs> and I'll tell you, you know, Dan basically told me like if, if if he wanted to be a doctor or like let's say a PhD or whatever else, you know that you know from the time that you're an undergrad and you 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 you, you, you make sure that you become that, so you really want that. Um, Dan didn't get into medical school. I think you know the the first couple of years out of Augustana. He went back and got a, uh, a master's in physiology. He used that to get into Rush St. Luke's at the Rush St. Luke at Northwestern. So I think that's dedication that's gonna come more from you. Us, you know, we, well, I don't know, I don't speak for you guys, but you know, like uh, uh, the liberal arts education for us, it really, it, it told me that I can do whatever the heck I wanna do. You know, um, I went into sales and, uh, and I had a decent career so far and just reinvented myself again, almost at the age of 40 you know, uh, here in the Quad Cities. But as far as not taking up other opportunities, I think it's really gonna come within, from, with, from within yourself. I mean, if, you, if you want to become like cardiologist or doctor or whatever, I mean, that's, that's the dedication that, that, that I guess it takes to get there. I, I hope that helps you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, all the internships I've had have been in the healthcare field in the sure. hospital, whether it's observation, um, but there's more to it than that as well. So I was just kind of curious what kind of you know I, I, I went from engineering to audiology to knowing that I didn't like old people, little kids, you know, to banking. So like, <laughs> <laughs> well, most medical Thanks students don't go directly into medical school. That's a common statistic. So what do you do? Do you go? You know, we're we, we're told you have plan A, plan B, plan C, uh, 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 but uh, uh, there's got to uh, be more to it as well. You know, get in the workforce, do whatever. In, in is, that, is, I'm just is, curious. Is LinkedIn a thing still? Or oh. is that is that dead? I mean, is that still? Do you guys know what that is? Very alive. I just want to make sure. Um, if if you go to my uh, my LinkedIn, which I think is like remember how remember JAB, and uh, anybody who wants to connect, it's remember JAB at gmail.com, and you look up Schimmel, S C H I M M E L, like we talked to him about this about like you know like. Uh, would it be a, a thing if we can have like you know some senior pre-med people coming to Northwestern? And he was, he was like, yes. He he's like, I, we've never even thought about it. But you know, you're so busy. Well, he's so busy when he's like in medical school and kind of stuff that uh, it might be a thing if I can connect one person in this room with someone that it might help them. I'd, I'd love that. So please do. I want to piggyback a little on what you sure said. Thing. Is that you have to, you have to know yourself yeah. inside. I, I had friends from Augie who were, yeah, they were pre-med, focused, this is what they're gonna do. And they got to medical school and were like, this isn't what I wanna do. And then it was like, well now what? And they were able to, I mean, they realized because they knew themselves, they couldn't see themselves for the next 40 years in this particular field. And it's really very individual. So anything you can do to do self-reflection um, beforehand to you know have an opportunity to talk to other people um, you know Mark you're you're a prime example you built a business based on stuff you like to do not on what you studied to do right and it didn't start out that way either like when I was in high school I worked at an uh, accounting office for a CPA um, and I thought at that point in time like this is kind of cool I kind of enjoy it you know and he was teaching me some stuff and I actually had the he was approaching the point where he wanted to get out of the business and he actually said to me he's like if you go and you become get your accounting degree and become a CPA I will sell this business to you I'm like hey all right pretty sweet deal you know I already got this made in the shade well I'll get, you know get my CPA and go on to that well got into it for a couple of years and for a couple of years third year kind of like eh, I don't know this isn't as much fun as I thought it was in the beginning of course it's always exciting in the beginning because it's new and different whatever and in the end I'm like no that sucks I don't want to do this so that's when interest changed. I was like, yep, okay, I'm writing that off. Definitely glad I did it, but don't want to do that again. It benefits me now in the business world, but I don't want to sit behind a desk doing the same thing day in, day out. That's not what drives me. You know, in my career now and profession, every place we go, every show we do is completely different. No two are exactly the same. And that's really what drives me. It's the creative aspect and the, you know, being in front of something different every day that drives me. So I just knew from that on, you know, from that point forward, be like, if my job entailed me sitting at a desk and doing the same thing every day, all day, I'd drive myself crazy, so that's not what I want to do. Ultimately, there's there's the business decisions based on facts, and then there's the emotional decision 
based on your inner feelings. And you need to listen to both of them, not just evaluate everything based on that. Aaron said it all. By know yourself, find what you like to do. Um, you might not know what that is right away. I was thinking law school my sophomore and junior year in Augustana. Talked to um, a couple Augustana graduates who were currently in law school. Um, by the time I reached third trimester senior year, I was done with books. I didn't want, I was done. I didn't want any more schooling. I decided we're going into the workforce. We'll see what else is out there. And that's kind of the, when I got over that hurdle, uh, Okay, we'll worry about the, the masters or law school later on down the road. I got into a few opportunities, the, the dealership opportunities, and then it took off from there. Now I'm doing, doing something that I love. Um, I'll have the opportunity to have masters paid for when I decide to start that too. So I guess there, you know, there's a little give and take, but know yourself and, and whatever might interest you, take advantage of it. Great. Question. Anybody else? Okay, so since we have five more minutes, would we be able to just go through everybody one more time and maybe like final thoughts? Um, things to think about in the future as you start um, thinking about building uh, your career trajectory and, and, and considering the differences that will come in and push you in one way or the other. So I'll start real quick. Um, I don't know how familiar anybody in here is with the STAR interview process. Anybody heard of that? Yeah. Get, prepare yourself for that star the star interview process if you guys can nail that your your foot's in the door that's all you need is to get your foot in the door get a get an opportunity somewhere um, prepare for everything take notes document notes um, document processes just prepare let's like prepare for a paper or a test prepare for meetings for projects just get you know get your preparation in as long as you are on top of you know on top of everything have have every all your ducks in a row, everything else comes easy. So familiar yourself with familiarize yourself with the star interview and then always remember to prepare for anything that you're doing. And if you guys aren't familiar with STAR, it stands for situation test, action, and result. Mm -hmm. Come in and meet with the career counselor if you're unfamiliar with it, we can talk about it and maybe some strategies on the best way to go about it responding to the star based paper questions or papers. We touched on it already, but I think the biggest thing is uh, connections and networking. Um, don't wait to start that until like your senior year, you know, junior, senior years, and you're doing internships, and then after you graduate. Don't wait to start at that point because a lot of the contacts that you make now in college, being professors or you know counselors or anything like that here, they have contacts as well that they I guarantee that they will share with you because that's how it worked for me, um, and they'll they'll tell you that too. So. Start now and you know use your professors and other folks on campus, different departments, as a resource now. Don't wait until your junior, senior year where then you realize, oh, it's kind of crunch time. Okay, I've got two years left or I've got a year left. I guess I should probably do something and figure it out. Um, you know, Start that stuff early and it will make that transition a heck of a lot easier when you get to that point and you won't be as stressed about trying to like, oh God, what am I gonna do upon graduation, so. There's a two. One is take initiative. Um, I don't sit around waiting for somebody else to say, hey, come to our class about this, or come see a career counselor, or whatever. Take it upon yourself to go do this. Um, uh, one thing I've noticed, I've uh, been in charge of our interns for many, many years, and one thing I've noticed over the years is that sometimes interns come in, and it seems to be you know, more so in the last five years, that interns come in and they're afraid to make a mistake. You know, so don't be afraid to make a mistake, but they also wait for you to give them direction. And, you know, so take initiative. Just, you've got, you've got a brain, you know, you've got this liberal arts education, you can go do this, you know, make decisions, take initiative, and take advantage of the opportunities. Um, the second one is be a lifelong learner. It doesn't just end when you walk out the door here with your diploma in hand or when you go on to graduate school and, you know, end up with your degree there. Be a lifelong learner. Guys, email didn't exist when I was here. Social media didn't exist when I was here. It hadn't even, I mean, it was percolating in somebody's garage somewhere. And I got to ride the Wienermobile to my wedding because I embraced it and learned what to do and created a campaign. So never underestimate the importance of continuing to keep on with latest trends and learning. Don't ever think you're a finished product. 
Um, I would also agree with all, all these guys. Uh, the connection is a big thing, though. I would say uh, there's people that, that, are, that are alumni of Augustana in every single profession. Uh, I guess it really depends. I mean, if, if you're Yeah, it doesn't matter actually. You know, whether you're going to law school or you're going to med school or whatever you're going to do, you could always find an Augustana person. You know, uh, especially if you're going to Chicago. You know, for after you move from from here, uh, that's that's what I would say. That and uh, make sure you enjoy you know college and your professor player. And my colleague Alex Washington again. He is the alumni coordinator in our office. So if you are interested in speaking with an alum about a particular field, you have some questions about what it takes to get get into it, what the daily work is like, by all means come to our office, schedule an appointment with Alex, and, and we'll be able to hook you up with alumni. Um, we'll be rolling out a mentorship program in the spring as well. But until that um, is rolled out, then by all means come. We can definitely hook you up at least with emails and maybe a phone number, in which you can. Uh, So everyone, again, thank you so much for coming. I want to thank especially the other people on that.